quantities or substantially quantities, tin disulfide nanotubes and tin monosulfide, tin disulfide nanotubes, misfit compound nanotubes. Uh, this is a picture that, a recent picture, picture that has been published uh, uh, by a student, uh, my, my former student, oh my, sorry, my student Gal Radowski, together with a group, uh, two groups in Germany. So we can uh, synthesize tin sulfide, tin monosulfide nanotubes. We can synthesize uh, lead iodide nanotubes or core shell lead iodide tanks and disulfide nanotubes. They have very important applications which I won't be able to describe at this point. And we can recently, we have shown that we can synthesize nanotubes using focused solar beam. So we collaborating with a group of Jeff Gordon from Ben Gurion University that in the desert. There is a laboratory in Israeli desert. There is a laboratory for solar uh, applications. So instead of focusing the solar beam on a solar on a photovoltaic cell, they focus it on our material. And here they come. Uh, the nanotubes grow using a lead catalyzed. We can grow nanotubes, new nanotubes, and this is a very re rewarding experiment because with very cheap kind of instrumentation that doesn't cost more than ten thousand dollars we could reach temperature of probably close to 3,000 degrees C and synthesize nanotubes that could not be synthesized otherwise. So I think that with that, I would like to conclude my talk. And uh, although I have many, many more pictures to show you, I think that I will, take th uh, I will better close here. And uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have some questions, I will be happy to answer. And I hope that with this lecture, I was able to show you that it's not just by going into new frontiers of chemistry, we have not just learned new chemistry, and indeed, indeed we learn every day new chemistry. In fact, we also develop new applications which are very, very important to our contemporary society. And with that, I would like to close my uh, lecture and thank you for your attention. Sure. Please. Nice presentation. You show beautiful images of multi-wall objects. So my question is, is it possible to obtain single wall objects with these materials? Single wall? Well, it's a very difficult uh, uh, undertaking. And so far, we have not been able to produce them, uh, at least not pr reproducibly. We published few pictures, but n not, not more than that. Uh, the reason is that theory tells you very straight that uh, when they, in order for molybdenum disulfide or tungsten disulfide to fold on itself, it's much more, the elastic energy is much bigger. It's about factor of 10 larger than carbon nanotubes. The result is, that they have, first of all, they accommodate larger volume. As you saw, they are much bigger than C60 or carbon nanotubes. And the second fact is that they always come in multi-wall because, and that has been shown clearly by theory. In fact, the theory has preceded the experiment that uh, the theory, the quantum chemical calculation of Gotthard Seifert clearly showed that the Van der Waals interaction between the layers stabilized the structure. And it's only if you have five layers and above that the structure becomes stable really stable. Then, one question. Uh, if you apply, in your case, the pressure in your uh, nano objects, you change also, also the electronic properties. Then, is very sensitive to that? The, the uh, this, this is a very important question, and uh, we are actually trying to ex explore this uh, behavior between the uh, mechanical properties and the electronic properties on individual nanotubes. You are setting up the experiment to do this kind of measurements. Uh, there are experiments now of Raman. Uh, there actually, there was a publication published in Physical FB this week uh, showing uh, the behavior of uh, Raman properties of single individual nanotubes, showing that there is a shift, clear shift, of the, uh, of the few Raman lines uh, with, the, uh, with uh, the size of the nanotubes. But I want, which means, because the size dictates also the mechanical behavior. So there is a relationship, clear relationship between the mechanical properties, optical electronic properties, and electronic properties, but this has to be studied. We have not set up the experiment to do it directly. Is it possible to obtain the tantalum sulfide in this way? 